Okay, just let him do this for a second. I want to see what he's doing. See how he's trying to bite? Super dominant. Okay, go ahead and pull him back. Okay, so if like you, if you can let him go one more time. I just want to watch his behavior during this. Okay, pull him back. Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canine Educator. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Today, short and sweet, we have a Rottweiler coming in. I don't want to say he's dominant, but he does have a bite history. He has gone after other dogs. He has done damage and it is do or die with this dog. So thank you guys so much for joining me and here we go. Yeah, I need to get him under control. Yep. Otherwise right. Yeah, I don't want you to have to put him down either. His main problem is with other dogs. Right. Where he does get aggressive towards people occasionally, and that's a problem as well. Yeah. So. And with the people, is it usually just like possession stuff like we saw when he was a pup? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, when they invade his space. Okay, gotcha. We're going to start from, from the ground up. So we have, a we, have a, we have a long road of foundational stuff. Um, when we work with dominant breeds, such as Arati, um, in bigger breeds, stronger breeds, you want to take it as slow as possible, okay? So what, what I want to do is I want to see, so I want to start with the relationship between you guys first. So the first thing I like to do with dogs of this caliber working on these types of things is exercise is really important um, because you have, a, you have a dog that's got all of this energy up here like all dogs do and then you got a little bit of stubbornness you got a little bit of protective behavior you got a little bit and all that kind of like combusts in the brain and so exercise physical exercise will kind of level all that out just like with humans we get anxiety and stress and all that built up and if we exercise on some level lifting weights running walking exercising whatever it releases that so it doesn't combust and turn into a, a, a detonated bomb so what I want you to do is I want to just see where he's at right now currently with your relationship. Um, because if we get a dog that has aggressive, aggressive tendencies, I was in the court last night representing a, a dog and we were basically going over in the courtroom with the judge and, and everything about dogs can be aggressive at certain times, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's an aggressive dog, right? So you had an incident where your dog attacked another dog. That doesn't necessarily mean that your dog is completely aggressive. Now the court has deemed the dog aggressive or dangerous um, by their laws and regulations and whatever. So what you have to do now is do what you're doing. You're getting training, that's the first step. You're working with a professional that can kind of calibrate your dog properly and diagnose exactly, not exactly, I shouldn't say that, but figure out what's going on um, more than you know, um, and then move forward from there. So I wanna work on your relationship first to see where we're at. Um, so I want you to just, just walk him around the room. All these dogs are in the crates, but if you want, just stay from this over here. And I want you to just walk around over here because there's actually a fake dog right here that I'm going to use uh, in training here in a little bit. Um, so just maybe just bounce off here and I want you to just walk him around and let me see where he's at. Okay. There, okay. All right, let's go the other way. Yep. Come on, bud. Okay. Yeah, come on. Come on, bud. All right, so here, bring him, bring him my way again. Uh, we already know that he's yeah. he's gone after another dog. Um, how much damage did he do? Uh, a couple he, bites. He needed some stitches. Okay. It's just one bite. Okay, good. Not so not too bad. So I'm just gonna bring the fake dog out, uh, and I want you to just hold him back a little bit, um, and I just want to see his reaction to the fake dog. Good. So let him out. Let him out. Let him out. Good. Now just pull him back a little bit. Okay, just let him do this for a second. I want to see what he's doing. See how he's trying to bite? Super dominant. Okay, go ahead and pull him back. Okay, so if like you, if you can let him go one more time. 
You just want to watch his behavior during this. Okay, pull him back. Come here. Off. Come here. Whoa, whoa, okay, buddy. All right, gotcha, man. I'm with you. Okay. I want to change that immediately. I just want to see what we're dealing with. Okay. So body posture, just a, just an absolute dominating dog. Just, um, I always talk about this. Rarely we see dominant dogs. He's not like, he's a dominant breed, but he's more of just like, so his, you see how his body is just like completely. Yeah. Just, just, I'm on top of you. I'm in dominating position. And then he started, you know, trying to bite the dog, etc. So first thing we have to do is that that's like, that's the worst part of it. That's good. Um, so now we're going to progress. We're going we're gonna to get better from here. Um, we need more control with you as a handler. Okay. He has absolutely no engagement with you when you're working, right? So like when you say, leave it, heel, down, or sit, or whatever, I would say, yeah, maybe 10% he's with you. If there's a fake dog in the room, 0%. So that's something we have to do, because here's, here's the thing, is, is, is much like kids, um, people talk about, a lot of times what, what becomes in dog training, is called, it's, it's a marketing scheme of like fear-based training. Um, I want a little bit of fear in my dogs, um, not a fear of like, you're gonna kill me, hurt me, or abuse me, but oh crap, I don't wanna get in trouble, fear. So a little bit of fear goes a long way. Same thing with parenting. You give the kid a look or the tone of voice, and then, okay, sorry, I know I'm in trouble. Right now he has, I'm gonna do whatever I want when I want, okay? So I wanna work on the leash pressure first, and then I wanna work on the behavioral part. So the prong collar you have is a little too big, okay. um, and it's, you have a, you want the best equipment, sure. okay, for this dog. I'm gonna give you the best equipment for this dog. That is um, kind of like an off-brand, um, and I wanna give you like a real serious training collar, okay? okay so I'm gonna grab that first. See how your collar, um, so see, there's a, there's a distributing plate here. And, and what that means is, is see how these prongs are going this way and these prongs are going that way? Yep. So these are going this way, these are going that way. Your prongs are all going in one direction, okay. okay? So what this does is it evenly distributes that pressure even better. So you're on the right path with the prong collar because you need that control. Even if you had a dog that was the happiest, friendliest dog on the other end of the spectrum, he's way too big way too powerful to be telling you what you're doing. With him, if I ask you to call him at any time, that means that he's making me uncomfortable and I don't want to push him over the edge. And you just, call, you just, you just really happily, Xander, come, and you call him, okay? Good boy. So this safety clip, it's okay, buddy. This safety clip is gonna go right on the, right on the leash, like this and the other end is gonna go on the flat collar. Okay. Like that. Gotcha. Okay, so now if this, like you said, if this, absolutely. Qu equipment can fail on any level, not just dog training, heavy equipment, whatever. Um, Be careful, yep. Like if he, of yep, if, if, he, um, if he reacts negatively, um, again with the muzzle, I'm just gonna get out of his way and you just call him, okay? So he's very, what we're seeing right now is he, he wants to get the other dog. He's very frustrated. He, you're seeing him be very frustrated here. Xander, come here. Good. Xander, sit. Good boy. <clears throat> so I'm giving him his space. Heal. Did you do heal with him at all? He does heal. Yep. Okay, heal. But it's tough when he's distracted. Okay, gotcha. But that's his problem. He Xander, sit. Good boy. So now he's engaged on this fake dog and I want to disengage him. So I'm going to move away this way a little bit. Heel. Good boy. Heel. Good boy. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to C-O-M me this way. Okay, so Xander, come. Good boy. Good boy. Ah, sit. Good boy. So I gotta be really careful how I do this because he is so frustrated, right? So he's looking here and I, and I always try to give the owner the POV or the point of view of the dog. And that's why 
I talk a lot and people say, you talk too much. I'm like, I'm, I, don't, I don't need him to know what I'm doing. I need you to know what I'm doing, right? Right. You're the one going home with him. So when he's, when he's here, I want you to think of the point of view of the dog. And you have to be really careful how you do this if you decide to do this when you go home. Is when he's locked in, and when I, when I tell him to come and he does it and I pop him, I have to be very careful how I do that because he's building and building and building and I go like that. A lot of times dogs like this will turn around and redirect right towards me and I have to be very careful how I do it. So I'm trying to be very, I'm feathering this in. Okay, I'm not being, I'm not being do this, do that. I'm just. So you're just you're trying to break his concentration yes. on that dog rather yes. than like. Yes, yes, um, yes. Yes, but I'm feathering it in. It, it's, it, to be honest, um, it's a, you have to be skillful to know when to put the pressure on, when to put it off, what to say, when, what not to say, how to do it, all that stuff. So that's what I'm doing right now. He, the fact that he's laying down is good. That means he's calm enough, he's not calm, but he's calm enough to lay down where before he, he wasn't. So I'm gonna move, I'm just gonna keep decompressing him off of this. I call it the balloon effect. He goes out, the balloon builds, I pop it and come back. And it builds and I pop it and it, and it just keeps decompressing. Sander, heel, heel. Good heel. Good heel. Heel. Good boy. Come. And I'm feathering this in because I, I don't have full control over him yet because he doesn't know me. So there. Xander, come. Gotta be careful. Yay, it's detonating a bomb. Good boy. Because at any moment, see that shake? That's him shaking all of that build that he just had up. So, so when he's building, right? Again, think about it, point of view. He's going, you son of a, I'm getting, and he builds and, and I go, hey, come over here. And I gotta be careful how I do that. Cause he's a really, think about it like a really big drunk dude at a bar that wants to fight somebody. And you go up and slap him upside the head. What, what it really is, I, I'm, I'm better than I have mm -hmm. exactly Yeah. Yes. Exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful how you do it because, you know, and, and, you're, and you know, you know that if you don't decompress it properly or if you put yourself in a situation where you build and you have other people around that can accidentally detonate that, you're going to take it out on them, right? So same thing with him. You got to feather him away, just nice and calm. Um, so there's an there's a, there's a aspect of it of you want full control with being minimally evasive as possible, minimally aversive as possible as well. So you don't wanna physically piss him off, but you also need to be strong at the same time. You need to mean it, but be fair, be neutral. Xander, heel. Good boy, uh-uh. Sit. Well done, buddy. Good job, bud. Xander, come. Good boy, good job, good, Xander, sit, good boy, good. And of course, the muzzle is always an aspect to training. He's in a vulnerable state. I, he doesn't know me and he's got a muzzle. So his defense mechanisms, if you will, are completely enabled right now. So he's in a vulnerable state. So I, have to, I also have to be aware and conscious and empathetic towards that. Okay, now the decompression starts, okay? So he's gonna go and I'm just gonna decompress it. And then my goal is to get him calm like he was before around the dog. Heel. Xander, come. Come. Sit. Good. Come. Uh uh. Sit. Well done, Xander. Heel. Uh uh. Sit. Good boy. So the obedience and the control that I have with the obedience, he still wants to go. Don't get, I'm not naive enough to say, oh, we're done. He's, no, 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 no. That's, that's not it at all. A lot of people don't see that when I'm doing these videos. They don't read between the lines of what I'm trying to do. But because he's like, aye, aye, captain, yes, sir, we're good. Heel. Good. So watch here. This is an interesting concept. Ah, uh ah, -uh, sit. So right, so see how he's building? And it gets very predatorial. Yeah, yeah. Yep, come on, bud. Good. But the thing is, is he, he almost seems like he gets into fight or flight, where he's like, am I, am I gonna go to you or am I gonna go to the dog? What I wanna do is I wanna meet him in the middle and say, you don't have to do either. Good boy. Sit. 
Yes, good boy, Xander. Good, he's fixated. Good boy. Good. Heel. Ah, sit. Xander, come. Good boy, buddy. Good job, buddy. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Instead of making him sit and stare and fixate, that doesn't work. And I'm, I, I know that, I'm watching this. I'm just gonna recall him off and see how that works. Good. See how he does this? It's, it's, he almost, he's like, am I gonna go to you or here? Xander, come. Little. Xander, come. Yes, good boy. I wanna bring him out in the parking lot and I wanna work him away from here. Cause this is me kind of just judging him out. I feel it would be fair and appropriate to just give him some sort of exercise and for us to bond a little bit better on the leash. Cause right now it's bad cop. Telling him what he can and can't do. Cause I'm just giving the dog the benefit of the doubt. I'm just gonna decompress him and uh, just walk him around and give him a little bit of uh, breathing room to be a dog. What I wanna do um, is I think he's gonna do really, really good outside. I have a good feeling. Um, so if you want, I'm gonna bring him back out and do what I was doing. When I walk out, you can grab the dog and just put it right behind this white truck, like right by the, behind the right tr white truck. And I'm gonna work him into the dog outside just cause he did really well on the leash, better out there. Um, so let's even take it a step further and basically do what I said, what I wanted to do in the beginning is do this with more space first. Uh, and then we'll come back in and we'll, we'll see how we're at uh, with, with working with it out there. Okay. Yep, yep. Come on, bud. So I'm decompressing over and over again. Threshold all the way in, all the way out, all the way in, all the way out. Slowly but surely, I'm gonna get close. Good boy. Using my body, cut. Nope, nope. Good. And go right back and try that again. Good, using my body to cut. Heel. Yes, good boy. Good boy. Using my left leg to cut into him. Again. Heel. Yes, buddy, good boy. It's a W. Good boy. Closer again. Heel. Yes, buddy. Ah, 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 ah. Come on, good boy. Hit that threshold. He rises back up. I'm gonna go right back at it and decompress it. Good boy. Heel. Yes, buddy, good decision. Good boy. Progress, progress, progress. Love it. Good, heel. Yes, buddy, good boy. Notice I'm being really careful with my left arm, how I'm handling him. I'm not giving him any pressure. Heel. Yes. I was like, what the hell? We'll get to the bikes later. <laughs> I see that. Heel. Yeah. One step at a time, buddy. Good. Heel. Good. So that worked him up. I'm gonna give him a second to chill out. Good. Sit. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Good. Sit. Good. Ah. Good boy. That's good. Good boy. Good boy. It's good. It is incredible. I love it. Well done, buddy. Heel. Yes, buddy. Yes, buddy. Yes, buddy. Good boy. Come on. Heel. Avoidance, I love that. Yes, buddy. 
It's good. Heel. Yes, buddy. Good job. Good boy. Good man. All right, we're going to end it right there, okay? Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope this video was insightful, helpful, educational. We are certainly not out of the neck of woods yet. However, we did make awesome progression. The owner is extremely happy. I'm happy. The dog is probably happy as well. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, liking this video, leaving your dog training questions behind. Don't forget to cop your merch, No Bad Dogs. We have some left. You can click the description link below in the description. I. Talk to you next time. Peace.